What's up, internets? Welcome to Movie Madness. This week, the film we're watching is Bad Times at the El Royale, a 2018 film directed by Drew Goddard and I think written by him and starring another goddamn star-studded cast who all took pay cuts just to be involved in this wacky film. If it's your first time here, what we do is we take a breather in the madness and focus on like one film at a time. And next movie, Raza gets to pick so at some point in this, there'll be some movie magic. You're gonna, you're gonna, all of a sudden, I'm gonna tell you what's good. What's up, internets? Quick note first, my apologies if you hear any echo in my voice throughout this episode. I just hooked up V2 Blind Mom into her digital projection machine so that we could share our image with you all, and I had some errors with the mics, so my bad there. If you're interested, our next movie for our next episode of Movie Club is The Sound of Metal, featuring Raza's alt-life daydream and uh, starring Riz Ahmed and Olivia Cook. It was also directed by a Darius Martyr. So, as we watch Raza live out his fantasies, we're hoping for a diverse and colorful film full of some, some interesting twists and turns. I think the music beat will be very engaging. Either way, we're gonna see you there. Since Panda picked this film, this finely dressed gentleman over here is about to give you a spoiler-free synopsis. If you get hooked on this movie, you can stop this show, go watch it, come back, give us your opinions, and tune in for the next one. This is kind of like a digital movie club. So like our other shows, this is recorded live. Don't be afraid to tune in if you're enjoying watching these videos after. And look at look at our, we got a, we got a JPEG friend, and it's awesome. And yeah, that's on the wrong way. Damn it. <laughs> I was close. I was close. Yeah. Thank <laughs> ben. you. <laughs> give me give me the synopsis. What's good with the bad times? All right. <clears throat> so I know you already <laughs> covered it, but I'm I'm going to read off what I wrote because once again, I found terrible dis descriptions for this movie. So mm -hmm. this week's movie is Bad Times at the El Royale, a 2018 film directed by Drew Goodard. This is Goodard's second directorial feature, a follow up to his hit out-of-left-field horror film, Cabin in the Woods. Four strangers in 1969, each one with a secret to bury, randomly meet at El Royale, a once-famous motel built directly on the border of California and Nevada, a location which may have its own buried secrets. In the course of one fateful night, everyone will have one last shot at redemption. That was fire. That was really descriptive, I would say. It made it sound tense and set the, st the that your stepping stones well. announcer a voice or your presentation voice? Listen. It very well delivered. What, once I started having panic attacks in high school, like, I wanted to be an actor originally, but that's that's out. Like, the best I can oh. do is, like, um, Bullwinkle or Shaggy oh, impressions. Oh, God, no, please. It. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Y'all already know what it is. If you've been tuning in at all, you may have caught the strange variety of content we've been putting out for the month of March. You'll see the calendar on screen floating by, but we've really been testing the waters with our variety filming, as well as trying out what works best for us. It's been a great journey. I've been doing everything from playing Super Smash Bros. Melee on a GameCube hooked up to my computer to walking through how I'm going to build some shelving in my studio. And then even we've been uh, we've been fiddling with uh, talking about F1 and streaming the races at the end of the week. If you want to see more variety, you want to support us, the more this channel grows, the more effort, the more variety, the more things we can bring you because I ain't got to worry about paying rent. Main issue is right now, baby, got to eat. Baby, I need a place to sleep. So, if you're liking what you're doing, what we're doing, you're liking what we're creating. Main thing is, sub, follow, get that count up. It's after March Madness. It's only up from here. Appreciate y'all for stopping by. Anyways, um, I guess oh. since I chose this film, I get to decide who goes first. Um, and it wasn't pre-planned. Bailey, what were your thoughts on Bad Times at El Royale? I had, like, a very rounded opinion, and I'm scared of <laughs> a wine mom already. Oh, my God. I thought... Express yourself. I thought it was mid, but 
very good and classic and technically incredible. But it's like I felt it was the Hateful Eight, but more modern. And uh, it even includes Old Man, uh, Old Man Bridger. You know what I mean? So first nerdy thing I noticed is being my personal life and my personal take. I, I had a big catch on the like BC filming of it. I had to like do a quick Google after watching it because I felt like I was tripping out and adding my personal inf uh, influence when I caught like all the mountains and the backdrops. I was like, this is eerily familiar. And definitely like the aesthetic of the hotels. I, I really liked the set design and you definitely, I see why there was all those stories about the actors taking pay cuts because it did, it was so technically crisp. Um, right. Textbook film school shots. I, I only took like minor classes, but like you got to compliment the hell out of it. Like you could use it as like a, if you're teaching a class, I could definitely see them setting up like, this is how you do establishing shots. This is how you do interior. Like it was all very profile. One character is like, you could map it out with a storyboard, bing, bang, bong, no mm. problem. I really appreciated that. Um, and in the same way, I found the color grading was used a lot that way, which was very interesting. I found it was very all dull and hyper realistic colors. And then whenever there was action or something crazy was about to happen, then they'll do a splash of pink and blue on the police car right before right before somebody's about to take it. Mm. Uh, uh, same thing with the stark contrasts of like the mirrors the hallway and then the big colorful bedrooms that they were in and each yeah. one was kind of themed to the characters a little bit as well yeah um even down to the the very end and the climax of the film then the fires all start up as it's all starting to build it's like they use the color grading to really push you through the movie and i found that super intriguing and like difficult <clears throat> to do um i had only one twist surprised me really whoops sorry quick ad i gotta pop in spoiler warning we accidentally messed up our formatting. Now we're popping into the spoiler part of the movie. So if you haven't watched it yet, stop it, go back, watch the film, come back to this YouTube video. If not, let's get to it. So since we bungled it up and we're already in the, hot, the, the spoiler warning, I'll save my favorite twist for last either way. But so if we're in the spoiler warning, the one I will tell though is like, it was funny timing for me because I was watching the movie and I was like, oh man, I don't really see enough John Hamm acting ever. I haven't watched a lot of John Hamm movies. And it was like instantly as I'm having that thought, he just like got doinked right away. Oh. I was like, oh, God damn it. I was like, I thought he had like five more minutes at no, least, no. man. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another controversial take that I loved the musical breaks. I really enjoyed how they, they took breaks into it. I, I thought it broke up the film well and helped mm. the pacing and set like an establishing tone for each scene. Like when he cuts her off, that's like all the hope is gone and blah, blah, blah. Cause that's how it carried her through all her life and her scenarios. She'd just sing. And then when she tried to sing and Chris was like, nah, it was like, oh, it's fucking done time, climax yeah. time. But very last is also uh, Goodard. Which thank you for catching that panda. That's I was very. It's, you could tell it's made by the man's who like made like contributed to Lost and Cloverfield mm -hmm. and all of these very twist ridden movies. So like shout out to the classics that he made. I could definitely see how they inspired where he got to in this. So just to touch on a few things, uh, the lighting for this film, the motel was entirely built for this movie. And they built it in a way where the lighting is just the lighting that they used. Like, I, I imagine that there there might be some nighttime shots where they might have had to use some external lighting. But otherwise, all the lighting was set. So everything we see, color grading wise, they fucking perfected it. Um, there was something else I wanted to touch on, but I'm just going to jump ahead. Um, uh, Goodard here... Um, He's only done two t films. He has one uh, TV credit for directing, but um, uh, I wonder if he has something about voyeurism or if or if it's just a topic that he likes to tackle because Cabin in the Woods literally has that yeah, aspect yeah. of being spied on. Mm -hmm. And then this, the, uh, the, 
the motel, its dirty secret is very much, uh, you know, spying on people. And I found Not that really. interesting. You know? The only dirty secret. Yeah. Yeah. B- both his both his movies have two way mirrors. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I liked Cabin in the Woods a lot, actually. Like a lot, a lot. Good to hear. Like significantly. It was really good. Yeah, I'm trying and to And I, I really like the spy aspect of movies, honestly. That's why I really like Hush, which you guys well, I don't think. Wine liked. Mom, what did you think of the movie? <laughs> Um The movie was not terrible. It was it was doable. Um, I too also really liked the coloring. Um, for me, for me, like because I've talked about this before, aesthetics are a huge thing for me. I can't watch things unless the aesthetic is correct. And so it doesn't mean it has to be one style of aesthetic only. But this movie picked like an era and an aesthetic, and they did it really really well. Um, I really liked the costumes. It was like one of the first things I said to Cody when I started watching. I was like, the little uh, raincoat she was wearing in the beginning with the black trim over her little yellow outfit. I was like, literally living. So cute. Um, but yeah, no, the movie was good. Actor choice was good. I love Dakota. I do also like John Hamm. Um, I just recently watched The Big Lebowski, so I was enjoying the selection. Um, so contrary to Bailey, though, I absolutely hated the singing portions of the movie. I feel like every time I had to listen to her sing, I got a headache. And it like, for me, it pulled me out of the movie because I was like in it and I was enjoying it. And then I was like, OK, here's this very annoying singing moment I have to go through. Like, I get it. I respect it. It makes sense for the movie. So I'm not going to say like, oh, I, I wouldn't have done the singing at all. But I was like okay, when is this going to stop? Um, and so there was that. And then the kid, the kid really stressed me out through the whole movie. Like I had nothing but sympathy for him. I just felt bad for him the whole time. Like I just felt like he was in the worst situation ever. And when we found him, like when they opened the utility closet and he was in there, I was very upset. Like I really hated that. That made me like sad. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the movie was, yeah. It was okay. I, like, I watched it. I, yeah. I don't want to say too much because I know there's going to be other parts once we talk through the movie, right? Where I get to say other things, but. Oh, yeah. We'll go off once everyone goes. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Okay. Well, okay. So I I love this movie. That's why I chose it, right? Everything from the aesthetic to the cast to the music. And I'm not just talking about the singing to, you know, fight with wine mom but like the soundtrack is solid yeah soundtrack right? is good, yeah and uh i do really enjoy uh that actress that was the this was the first thing i had seen her in darlene yeah Dar- the character darlene um and i really enjoyed her storyline and i feel like the music aspect really fits and i i don't feel like they overused it um you know we get the one time the one flashback of her before she ends up at the the motel uh one time practicing and then yeah and and then when jeff bridges is breaking into her floor does that thing oh there's five times actually so then when she starts to sing once they're all like bound to chairs Yeah. And then the ending, which is like happy, happy. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, what I really wanted to touch on um, is like all the subtle topics that this film covers because it's set in our reality, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, 1960s to 1970s. Someone pinpointed it, and it's supposed to be 1969. That's when that Richard Nixon uh, speech is given, which is shown on TV. Right. Um, And yeah, just first off, the movie in general sounds like a joke or at least the beginning of a joke. You know, a singer, a priest and a vacuum salesman walk into a hotel. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I thought that Mm -hmm. was pretty interesting. Uh, But yeah, the, you know, Nevada, California bylaws. Apparently this motel was based on a, a real location. Um, I didn't look too much into that, but uh, mm-hmm. the, f- the fact of laws being 
different in each state, being able to walk across the room, you know, to avoid breaking any laws was interesting. But then the politics, because Nixon's in the movie on TV, but then we're hinted at someone powerful who likes to speak being filmed. Obviously. Right? Which, you know, uh, personally, I think maybe it's JFK and Marilyn. I've Monroe. read more in, in into that, and I can answer you, that question. Oh no! It's it's a uh, it's it's all the political f- figures in that time. So, so like MLK, JFK. But do you uh, think it's all of them? Like who was on that specific tape though? It's it's the majority of of like them taking over the one last person. Couple years. He one brings person. up a good point. But Rosalind brings up a good point because I think uh, it's Martin like a multi and and JFK both died within a year. Of each other, like in oh, reality? like you're so so. Raz is saying these are so the possibilities are that it's a lot of people. Yes, and yeah, I'm misunderstanding. There's okay, many, yeah, yeah. and then when he he brings out the uh, the tape and he shows it to what to her face, she he points at John Hamm's character. So it was up to that point, and and and, and shit. So I yeah. the. the the thing I, I read is that it could be these political figures back right. then, plus other political oh, figures. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, so it's just like a, a long tape. Like, there's multiple recordings on there, you're saying? There's multiple, yeah. Yeah. I, I said years. specifically that he had one tape from this one guy that he didn't send off, and that guy's well, dead. It was nice now. to him. Yeah. Yeah. He's, cause he's like, I kept the tape because it I was feel nice like that, to me. I feel like that was MLK, probably. I think it, it was JFK. I See, think it could be either thing. one of those, but I think it's probably MLK is the hint, especially because of the way that the it guy. Could be either or, but... Hold on, I think specifically MLK, just because of how um, the Chris's character acted when he saw it and he showed the girl, and she was she was like what, and he was like, it's kind of a because you could tell they were a little racist. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. I don't know if I picked that up, but um... I I definitely picked that up. Anyways, you know, it, it could have been JFK, who was notorious for the whole Marilyn Monroe thing, and MLK was notorious for Bailey. sleeping with a lot of women, right? Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, the acts of war and the consequences of it with drugs, which Wine Mom pointed out with uh, the young man that is running this entire establishment, mm-hmm. yeah. um, and the cover of Cults. And murders at the time, you know, that that was a big thing. Right. And uh, John Hamm's character, who I am dressed up as, uh, for all those viewers that are watching this. uh, uh, John Hamm from the hit movie Mad Men. That's a series, isn't it? Show. Mad Men. Show. (laughs) See, I I haven't watched Mad Men. I I plan to, but... uh, It's good. It gets spicy, like, later on, but it's a slow burn. But you brought up a great point because I don't think I've ever seen him in a movie for more than 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking about that last night. I was like, he's only been like supporting roles. He's in what Maverick. I... as like He's in Maverick. He's in like uh, The Town. He's in all of these movies because he, as side characters and I'm in big side characters like, oh. Like the only movie I saw but he's in an was this TV Disney series. one about him going to cricket, uh, going to India and find a cricket player to play baseball. Oh right, uh, it's based was... on a, a million a million dollar arm or some shit, shit like that. Based on wasn't, a true story. Yeah. Wasn't that before Mad Men? No, that was after. Oh okay. See, I think the so problem yeah, is so... a lot of the movies he was in, it's short periods of time because he was doing Mad Men at the same time. Probably he was a lead he's, in a he's lot of movies Batman, before he got Mad Men. And then oh. after he got the Mad Men money, he, he just took the checks like, instead. Why yeah, do he, I need to be a lead? Yeah, anymore? He's, he, exactly. He's doing yeah. skip the dishes commercials here in Canada. Yeah, for any American exactly. or European, yeah. anyone else that's <clears throat> not in Canada, <clears throat> which is funny. Um, anyways, um, <laughs> his character uh, again, we're in to spoiler territory. He uh, he fronts himself as a vacuum salesman which is pretty funny because he is actually a secret service person who reports to j edgar hoover 
and Hoover is a famous vacuum brand. So that was a nice joke that they threw in there. Um, <laughs> and Hoover was notorious for, you know, keeping tabs on people and recording them and blackmailing them. And there were rumors about the mob blackmailing him. And like, there's a ongoing rumor that he was a cross dresser and, um, that would have yeah. hurt, hurt his political career. And again, at this point, Nixon's in charge, which means that their organization shouldn't exist, which is why even John Hamm, being a detective or person of power, um, you know, uh, that you might see in a positive light, maybe not this day and age, but... Uh, but he, he's a cop, and uh, so he also has his dirty laundry to bring into this. And, uh, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to leave it for now. So, Raza, your overall what, thoughts of the film. What was his, his dirty la his laundry? I mean, he was given orders, and he chose to act, and it got oh, him through. Okay. That's not really that's dirty laundry. That's very true. And it, it's, yeah. him, him being there is illegal. Again, if Nixon's in power, then that means J. Edgar Hoover's organization is supposed to be shut down, which yeah. means that he's there illegally. And he's doing things that, you know, involve past presidents and people yeah. who have been murdered for speaking out. And that's he's, he's like the original hmm. like seals. Or or like history. the last the last of the original, you know. I was feeling it was like hinting that he was CIA. That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying oh, so he was like uh, faithful to the other president, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm following. I'm following. Okay. So um, I think this is one of the best movies I've ever seen. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, I think that this is the type of movie that should be in film school for, for like pacing or storytelling. Mm -hmm telling and then you you, you all made a, a, a good point for the film or the color gradient too and that was on par or or amazing every actor carried their their own weight chris hemsworth was the weakest part of the movie but he didn't he wasn't bad he like I just uh, every actor just acted better than him but he did very good I think this was his, his first non Thor move. No, 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 no. He's done a whole lot of movies. He's just underrated. Oh, no, classic pigeonhole. Classic pigeonhole. Yeah. First off, before Thor, he had Star Trek. That's where he like really blew up. Oh yeah, he was a dad in Star Trek. Yeah, I remember that. Okay. But then, um, even same director as this, Cabin in the Woods. A lot of people forget mm -hmm. that he's in that. He's oh. the jock. And he did that Snow Fucking White one. Reason. Yeah, and Red Dawn, I think, came out before this, too. No, Thor. I mean, so, like, the, like the first Thor movie, like 2011. Right. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, didn't um, Red Dawn come It might out? have been after. Before, before Thor. He did do a couple of things, but okay. it, closer to you being right. He didn't really have a big starring role seems so you are okay. closer to right i thought i was talking blasphemy there for yeah but um mm -hmm. anyway so like he, he he was the weakest part of the movie but he did a good job his his accent was weird it felt like a new yorkian accent and he was trying something there it was it was really weird but he did present himself like per cool like 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 this weird force in the movie um ever like all the twists i did enjoy every twist of this movie where it like halfway through like oh i get it that's why jeff bridges is in the hallway they're going back to that point and i did like the, the that non-linearity of of the the story um the back and forth and and the fact that no ca character was good or bad they had more, they're all gray so mm -hmm. Uh, and then Dakota Johnson's character, like her whole storyline, uh, was like, I like that twist too. That was like, oh, wait a second, she's not okay, never mind then. But, um, 
and and then of course Jeff Br- Jeff Bridges, uh, he killed it. He was like, he shared the scene like steal the scene. He shared the scenes with a lot of actors in this movie because a lot of the actors also killed it too. Nobody outperformed anybody. Everybody was just so powerful right. in in the roles and the singing part. Um, I looked at that character as like the um sort of like the the silver lining in all of this. So her singing brought like that like sort of like North star for Jeff Bridges and for like the entire story, because she's the only the whole like quote unquote good character. Like she doesn't really have any negative, uh, like her backstory is just not like is, is having to go out to Reno and shit because she was, she like got fucked. Walked over, so yeah, that's I true. um, I I saw her as a, like a beacon of, of hope in this movie, and ultimately, like she has a like all the characters have a, a redemption arc, right? All of all of them do, and that, that's what it's it's out of factory, and in the movie just it hits all the notes, and I just I just I enjoyed ev- everything about this move, <laughs> movie. I'm I'm really happy to hear you say that, Raza, because yeah. uh, I I agree. Uh, mm. Again, it's it's like a thought out piece of art from yeah, art. start to end, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, as far as cast, did anyone catch uh, who Jeff Bridges' brother was? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I did. I did. I did. I'm gonna. Kill I you. recognized I'm gonna it, but you. couldn't put a pin in it. I mean, we don't really get to see his face, but it's Nick Offerman. And that's how the movie starts. Okay. 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 You know, uh, Last of Us, Parks yeah. and Rec. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big circle. Two, you know, two Parks and Rec's characters are are in this movie. 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 Who's the, the guy who announces Dar Darlene at the end? Brian or or Jerry? Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. And uh, to go to the point of you guys talking about the singing, uh, Chris Hemsworth, which. Wine Mom surprised me because she was like, I really like this cult leader. I was like, interesting. Comic yeah. book actor. So was this, was he emulating Manson? Is this who he was supposed to be emulating? Yes. You no, think it's Manson? Yes. No. <laughs> no, it's very, it's quite, it's very obviously Manson because he also had problems with very young, young girls. So it made sense. Okay. Yeah. Also, like, it's, it's, a movie like that, based on like the vibe of the movie, it makes sense because everybody always uses Manson. Whenever they do a cult mm-hmm. leader, it's always Manson. Especially if it's a timepiece, it's always going to be Manson. Why? I don't know. There's other cult leaders that they could use or whatever, but yeah. It's but the time, Manson. it makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense, but also like... it's Because I don't know a lot about it, so it's also the easiest one to pick for like but, someone who's okay, not... But, you know so like low key like this is like this is me reaching because this is just what i know of manson because as you guys know i love superhero or serial killer stuff you love what anyway serial killer stuff okay cody it was a slip up anyways so um i didn't even fully say it you guys are losers anyway um now you maybe you maybe forgot what i was saying are you guys proud of yourself well Oh, okay. What I was gonna what good cereal. So color. no, no, no. So no. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're gonna frustrate me. Stop moving around on the camera, okay? Okay. The reason why I think it's Manson, like why to me solidified mm-hmm. it's Manson, is because at the end, when she's singing and he gets pissed off about it, instead of just letting her sing, Manson's very, 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 very connected to the music industry, and that would have pissed him off. If it was actually him, yeah. because he thinks that he's the best musical artist to exist. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. And, like, you get that satisfaction of his character being like, Yeah. All right, shut up. I've heard better. Yeah, I don't care that you can sing yeah. fuck you better. Yeah. Makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. That's a good layer. I thought it, I, I thought it because that field, I know that, like, f- yellow flower field thing was, like, a big stereotype of the Manson. Well, yeah, he did the whole trailers and hippie thing. Yeah, so that was... On I, a farm. That's where my mind went automatically. Mm-hmm. See, like, I, I was going to say, overall, like, I really respect how you guys feel. It was, like, one of the best movies ever. It was super around. 
and like all very crisp. But I found it like how people meme about heist movies. Like it was very M. Night Shyamalan. Like I felt like twist, 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 twist. It's like, you know, you're I kind disagree. of relying on this plot device a little too I disagree heavily. Because a little M. Night bit, Shyamalan Raza. has everything as a twist. Every single, everything has to be a twist. With this movie, no, there's not that. Everything is split up in a balanced way. There's not that many like twist, uh, like like there's like a lot of big twists, but there's no like like you you can follow along pretty easily too, and then it it throws it throws you off. So I mean, every character. These movies. Really. No, because that's why I'm not saying it's a bad movie. <laughs> Are you baked? <laughs> yeah. They, they could like, man. They weren't because they didn't use it bad. That's why they didn't. They weren't as right. bad as a Shyamalan. You're right because they were very well thought out and well executed. Right. But I feel it's also just like, it's like when, like I said, like when you're doing a heist movie, so then you can fill out a plot with like a good, you know, you're going to need 40 minutes of twists. So you're like, okay, this movie's full of twists. Okay. How's John Hamm going to get it? How's this guy going to get it? How's the, know. we better make it a twist. Oh no, like he's behind the mirror. Movie. You know, <laughs> this movie. that was kind of cool though. I liked it. Like, what the fuck? And then another twist happened happens like literally a couple because i because it's i think the reason why i like it because it's told in, in, in a non-linear way so because of that there's going to be twists linking up with each other there's like his story is going this way and jeff bridge's story is going this way and they're going to meet up at, at one point and it, and that conclusion has to like make sense and it kind of it did, and I, how he got thrown to the wall after getting shot, uh, um, like in the hallway. I was looking at my friends like, oh, he's, this is gonna happen now, isn't it? And then he flies at, at the wall. I thought he died there, but no, he just looks like Two Face. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really thought that's he was, what I was gonna get got. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is that um, when you were talking about like how everyone plays so well as a character in this and that that's what we're seeing eye to eye raza because it's like it's flesh it's fleshed out and it's not even twists it's more so we're getting more information about people's perspectives and their exactly. backgrounds and all that yeah. so it's less so twists and it's more like a blooming flower where we're getting more, and more mm, yeah more. i but, think it's uh, definitely filling the blanks Right. I mean, it's definitely but, uh, character development, but I still think that they were twists. John Hamm, um, his character hams it up, for lack of a better term, at the beginning, um, when he's playing this, you know, um, eccentric uh, vacuum salesman, you know? Yeah. As soon as they walk in, he's like, uh, what is it, Kutrama? Which is, you know, I was here first, my luggage is sitting there, I... I'm first once our server is here and uh, he's very in your face. Like, here's my card. I'm going to talk a mile a minute, but he, that's him playing a character, playing a character. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it. and, and even his, uh, his, even his short time in the movie, he was even fleshed out. Like, uh, like uh, they even like did his whole thing very well, and then when he dies, he dies. Uh, spoiler alert! Uh, uh, because uh, I feel like his entire, like his pacing and his balance was done right too. Like that's what I think. That like everybody was like d delivered, and then the movie balanced itself on those deliveries, and it just felt like yeah, a whole bloody package on yeah, great. Great, 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 great movie. <laughs> See, like the only twist that like really shocked me, shocked me was when when Jeff Bridge, when Jeff Bridgey got got doinked with the bottle. That was the only one where I was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, uh, yeah. I was so stoked. I'd have to say that. that was the only thing I didn't expect. I mean, he deserved it, but yeah. I didn't. That was the only piece of the movie that I didn't expect. Everything else, right. I was like, okay, I know how this is all going. Like, I'm seeing the patterns. I'm seeing the lines. I'm connecting the characters to the stories. 
Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as I saw the, like, I'll be honest, as soon as I saw the priest, I was like, that big, that first scene we saw with it opens up where they're in the hotel room and the guy gets shot after burying the money. As soon as I saw um, the, the priest character, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's obviously, that's the connection there. Like, I never for a second thought he was a real priest. I was like, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, like, I feel like that was supposed to be kind of like their their big-ish twist or, like, their most powerful character. To me, it felt like that was supposed to be, like, he felt like the main character of the movie, even with all the other oh, characters. Oh, no, I feel like John Hamm was going to be the No, no, not once. Character. Straight up. Not uh, once. I thought, this is a guy, he's going to have his whole thing, and then and then he, he, he was, he was going to come out, quote-unquote, a changed man. No, see, for me, it was like as soon as as soon as I connected the priest with the guy with the money at the beginning, like the opening shot, as soon as I connected those two, I was like, yeah, that's basically the main character because like they did live till the end, him and the the woman. So they technically were the main characters, if you think about it. So to me, I I got the main character part uh, in the car. I got at the at that point, I these two humans are going to be carrying the movie where they make that deal after she she bashes his his, yeah. his, his, his head but the entire point up to that the movie didn't really say who was the to me at least who was going to be it tricked you into believing uh, each of the, the except Dakota Johnson it, it tricked you to uh, believing that all of these characters probably could be uh an importance, but then halfway through, it's like no. Motherfuckers have some skeletons. How you said everyone's more morally gray in this movie, mm-hmm. I completely agree, and mm-hmm. I feel like um, Darlene isn't as uh, Dakota Johnson's character. I'm blanking on her name. It's something like Sunshine or something. But yeah. uh, again, I they were both fruit name. Maybe. Um, java juice or whatever (laughs) starbucks (laughs) no but um um again dakota johnson she came from an abusive home protected her sister got Mm -hmm. out of there um and aside from that i mean the only arguable thing is that she kills a cop no problem but i think at that point she has a had enough with men in general i don't even Um, think she Makes, knew that he a was a cop. Point. I don't think she that's had that connection. Point. Yeah, I, I'm I mean, kind of with Wine Mom. I don't think she knew, but I think it was also like supposed to paint how deep into like. I think she just didn't fucking like the guy from the, the second she met him. So she was like, "Well, you busted in my room, so you giving me the him. yeah." She was like, "Fuck this! You're giving me the the opportunity, basically." Now, obviously, it's some sketchy dude coming into your room and, and like breaking in. The door. I would have done the same thing. Right. I felt like right. that was like supposed to be the first hint at like how evil Chris Hemsworth was because they're so willing to commit violence without thinking about it. That it, it's like what could they you didn't be know anything from? about? Chris oh, you Hemsworth. didn't really know about his character at that point. Like you yeah, knew about, know about it, him. but you didn't know about it. Like I know what you're saying, Bailey, because they she did hint he's a bad bad man. Yeah, it was obvious. Yeah, that yeah. It was like, like there's obviously there was a there was another character. Yeah. I didn't think cult. I thought she was maybe running away from like their father or something and. The sister, the younger sister, was more yeah. connected to the but father because like, he was nicer to her. Even that part, even even that part where her sister calls, uh, Him. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. That to me, at that point, it ch- it changed. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Uh, Dakota Johnson is not who I think it is, who I think she is anymore, because this girl is clearly doing something she's not supposed to be doing, right? And then. Yeah, it just, uh, to me, that was like, uh, that's another sort of twist there, because you you don't expect her to do, to be uh, like off on, like go, like as soon as that happens, she's I going to uh, a, a rogue. Uh, but it, yeah, it's... It, I, I saw it's it her, as soon um, as she showed up. What? As soon as she showed up, I was like, yeah, that one's going to be a problem for sure. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't expect that. I, I thought her she was going to die at some point or, or early on, but um, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, that, that's what I think. It kept it kept me casting, and then it like it didn't really like. Yeah, I, I'll I'll say save that for part for when we get there. But yeah. Mm. 
I really like Dakota's character. I like yes. that storyline. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Her I, character I just, is really good. Yeah, I found I found it like it was relatable for me because I have a little sister. So like mm-hmm. I was relating to that like need to protect her little sister kind of thing that she had going on and like just th- yeah. that arc made sense to me. I liked yeah. it, but again like I, see, yeah. I related to her in a way where it's like, if I was in her situation, I would have acted exa- I w- exactly the same. Like, yeah. I would have had the same yeah. type of attitude. So I really, I really liked her character. But I knew right away, like, this one's going to, mm-hmm. there's going to be some problems from her. She's not going to be quiet. When she walks in to the, the motel, because she's the last one to arrive, and John, John Hamm's like, yeah, fuck no, uh, hippie's not, you know, taking my room. He's very rude to her. But... Yeah. Like, you get that vibe that she's, like, you know, writes fuck you into the uh, the sign and sheet and all that. But we, yeah. it's a very bland performance, and I'm not hating, but it's, like, it's played that way until it's revealed that she has a younger girl with her tied up mm-hmm. from her trunk to yeah. the uh, bedroom. And then... She's speaking. But like, you, you, like again, John Hamm automatically assumes she's a hippie because she's dressed the way mm-hmm. she is, right? Yeah. But that, but that's the thing is, so she's played so straight, and then she kills John Hamm, and then you're thinking, oh, she's a bad person, and yeah. we've we've only seen like little bits of her past at this point, and that's yeah. where they start to really grow on her character, and then when she's confronted with the bellboy, you know, and. She obviously doesn't want to hurt this kid, but then her right. little sister is being a little, yep. you know what? Yeah. And you can see how her mind is going. Like she doesn't want to hurt anyone, but if you hurt her, you bet your ass that she's gonna fucking blow you away with a shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't even yeah. think it's if you hurt her; it's if you interrupt what she's doing. If you harm her trying to protect her sister, I think is more what it's yeah. about. Because she thinks, I think she, yeah, she gives way too much patience to her little sister. Yeah, because even when she got murked, she yeah. didn't care for her own life. She no. was ready to go, you know? Yeah. True. Very true. Um, I thought the deaths were like, like every death, I know a lot of them are quick and they just moved on, but Koda Johnson's death was, uh, that had a lot of weight to it. It was the best. Death. That was a surprise. I thought she was was going to be one of the characters that that was was going to live. Um, but uh, ultimately, she has the most growth out of all of the the, the majority of, of of the of the characters. And she, hmm. out, like, as soon as she like ex- like tries to protect her. Her sister, and it comes to to that re- realization at the end. It's a bit too late, of of obviously. But I I feel like she has the most like. But that's a good point because she's literally the only person who's not only thinking about herself. Yeah. Given given Jeff Bridges and Darlene do eventually. It grows to it, yeah. It grows to it. That relationship, I I'll touch on that too. But those two, they were. That relationship was um, like that. that when I, I figured they were going to be main characters, I was like, okay, this is, these two are going to have to overcome a lot of stuff in the next 50 minutes now. Right. I'm ready and shit. So. <laughs> so, like, when we're talking about, about Dakota Johnson's growth, that's where I'm a little lost. Is it like, because you're including the whole growth from going to the cult and then getting out of the cult? Like, Overall, I felt like at the time at the hotel, I felt like, yeah, like because they show the flashback scene where the father was abusing her and then he's like, where's where's Daisy or whatever. Again, I'm blanking on names and I'm not going to look it up, but uh, she she literally goes, wakes up her little sister and they show that first aspect. And that's, you know, got to be 10 years prior. Yeah, like, oh. It'll be like, more than I, ten like years. She, okay. Yeah. She oh. becomes look like, like uh, she just wants to care for her, her sister the entire time, and that like to me, from like even the flashback to like when we see we see them at that big bond flyer, 
right, to to now the whole the hotel. It's just like she's always trying to protect her sister, but like she's she's still not figuring out her her own sort of self. And I think this this whole movie, like the the movie we saw, was her her becoming like a uh, a protector kind of is for her. Right. But I think it was obvious that that was going to be the role that she was going to play. I feel like if anybody went into a a savior role, it would be the the boy. Yeah, the the one who was the bellboy. If anybody like grew into a savior role, because he started off as like literally working for this grimy company, being a basically a grimy guy. Like I know it was, you know, he what he needed to do to get by. But it's like you chose a grimy career, so. Um, I think if anybody yeah. had like a like a savior arc or I to me, it was more like a sacrificial lamb. Like, I think it would be him because, you know, I, I do agree. Like, I don't know. I think I, like, I got shot I in the face. I think Dakota Johnson would have been a sacrificial lamb. But, you know, I've I see. No, but he ultimately, years. though, in the yeah. end. Right. Yeah. He has to fight his internal demons and embrace that negative part of himself in order to save everyone which is more sacrificial Mm -hmm. lamb in my opinion and and so that's where i think the key difference there is and that's where i'm not super challenging because i definitely when you include her whole arc like her flashbacks and stuff then yeah she does have a lot of change but like there he has to like forgive himself yeah and i find like saying that she's just doing a savior role it I felt that we were being spoon fed, like, oh, she's going to protect her sister. And by the end of it, she did what she like protected her sister. We, she didn't have like a resolution other than like, I'm still going to love her anyways. Like, I don't understand what changed about her while she was at the hotel. You know what I mean? Because like, sadly enough, right. she actually didn't save her sister. Even sacrificing herself didn't save her sister. Yeah. So oh, that's so like that's the more, okay. right for him at the end. Okay. He sacrificed for the last two. Like he actually saved some people. Like his sacrifice was actually worth something because not even just that's not true. even for the not even for the priest character because he was essentially had some sort of Alzheimer's or dementia that he was dealing with and he wasn't quite there. But for her, because she was kind of like, if you look at all the characters, she was the character that was in the worst position, like doing these shitty singing roles, not making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Also a woman, single, you know, like, trying to... Like, because the thing is, like, it's not that I hated her character, because I know, I think you guys think I did because of the singing, which is not true. Like, I didn't hate her because of that. I didn't like the singing. I, I liked her character. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm just saying, like, out of all the characters, she was the one that, like, needed to make it to the end end. Because even though the two of them made it to the end together, technically she's really the one who made it to the end end. Mm-hmm. To be the most successful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and not to mention Darlene, that character, she's really kind of the only one who listens to the bellboy. Like, it, of course, yeah, yeah, he, like he spends a lot of time with the priest, but obviously that character doesn't want anything to do with right. what. But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, you get that moment where he's like, I can't kill any more people. And she yeah. says, how many people have you killed? We get his flashback, which I also love how we get each room. And then we get like the maintenance room, which is uh, his backstory. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. But yeah. then when we get back to the present, uh, you know, she says, it's okay. Like she's kind of coming to terms with the situation. It's fucked up. It's messy. Yeah. And he's been through some s- shit. So she's like, all right, you don't have to kill anyone. But then... Mm-hmm. He like steps like he up that's when he like he needed to be forgiven yeah. like and that was yeah. ultimate because even though the priest was the priest she ultimately was the priest so she's that's the, why she's, because their character that star well yeah, I just so, yeah. I just feel like those two characters were the same character you know what I mean in a weird way like the priest and the singer I feel like they were just they were the same uh-huh. character no the priest and the and the singer to and, me and Darlene. they were the same character. Mm. Hmm. Just Given played she, in two she different did, bodies, personally. I mean, there's differences, obviously, but she did steal as well. A lot of people yeah. are forgetting that. She wasn't completely innocent. Yeah. They, they've they all done illegal things. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Um, I just want to touch on, on the, the card thing. That, like, showed me, like, that was, like, I like how all of them were done super balanced, right? But then not 
at the times you expected it to be because you have to see a backstory of each of a character and then that sort of changed how you you felt about them like like to me uh like when you you see jeff bridges steal the the money and, and then go to to court and everything i thought that was like okay he, maybe i i shouldn't i should start picking sides now of like who i, I like more um but i did like like the little things and that goes back to what i was saying about the balancing of the movie because it again it fleshed out each character and they all had their own sort of like own like arc in their own way some more than others and stuff so it's ultimately i yeah it's just uh miles's thing ultimately like was that satisfying thing how he headshotted everybody because the entire movie was winding up right and then the punch was that a climax and then i felt that was so satisfactory well he was like i his character arc also was like unsuspecting mm -hmm. because he's so young yeah. and he plays like such yeah. like a meek young guy who seems like kind yeah. of a weird pervert because he's got this weird job and he's doing this pervy like video thing mm -hmm. that he has to do and then he's also a drug addict and you kind of get this like weird like this guy is not like a good like this is like you know like a little jerk character kind of yeah. like almost yeah. almost as if like a little ringleader ish and then you you get yeah. the reality that like he's actually not a ringleader and he's being I abused mean, right, by the owner right off the bat he's pretty terrible at his job and yeah he's coming off he's coming down from, from some yeah it's just but you just can't he doesn't give off he doesn't yeah, give off the energy. Yeah, like yeah. when you saw that he was part of the military and that he basically is like has shell shock and whatever you know PTSD that soldiers get, right? It's not mm -hmm. very obvious that that's what it is until the end. I mean, if if you really think about it, the drug use was kind of the hint that he was a part of the military because that was a very common thing back then. That drug specifically, yeah. anyways, was very common yeah. with with war, with war vets. So it kind of was a hint if you know if you know your history well enough. But I don't think any of us know our history that well enough to catch that until now. But um, yeah, I didn't get the hint. Like I didn't get that vibe from him. And then when I saw he was in the military, I was like, oh shit! Like this yeah. this kid's actually like got it the yeah. stinkiest. This this, <laughs> this, this man sucks. This man's Tom Holland looking ass was the best actor of the movie by far. Like his his Tom Holland looking ass the way good. he was able to carry those he like was different pretty good. personality aspects. He, he was of good. Yeah. You know what's funny? Tom was Holland good. was actually offered that role and he turned. Thank God he turned. Thank God he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. I agree. Um, I was like, I gonna say yeah. His entire thing that that was another good twist. I was at the very end where it did a flashback to him, uh, in Vietnam. I was like, okay, so that's why. He's let's go. He goes so he goes silcom so mode. Uh, out right after picks up the gun and then starts bam, bam, bang and gets like a triple head head headshot. I thought that was again a, a good payoff because at that point you, you hated the people who needed to to be hated, and when and when they died, it felt good. You, you, you know, so um, mm -hmm. like and that goes back to everybody's acting. And everybody's being able to act to to be you. You want them to hate you. Like I, halfway, I hated Dakota Johnson's sister. I was like, "You're gonna fucking die in the in the worst way possible." And yeah. I never, I like, never hated that. Psychotic. I never. Hated I hated her so much. I actually liked the little girl. No, as as soon as she says her name, because the the bus boy is like, "I don't even know your names," you know. I just want to live, and then she's like, "I'm Daisy," and this is my sister. Grandpa. Yes. Yes. At that point, I was just like, you fucking psycho. You're going to go. You're going to go, man. I like that she was an antagonist. You're gone first. Brat. And then she stabbed like, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I had no problems with her, but I you felt like she was also say. there to be like, she has to be careful. And then the same. Yeah. Way. <laughs> I felt like she was also there to make you hate her. Like that was the thing. Like it was, yeah, I mean, like, she was definitely supposed yeah. to, yeah, she was you definitely know. supposed well, to be a dislike character, but given, 
Yeah. I don't know though. I don't Becker. know though. I, I I don't know though. I think that's personal, but to me, I did. I think it'll for somebody it'll they'll pick up a different uh, vibe. Fair. But I, but I think I, mean, I think fact- we have to be fair with that little girl character because when he picks her up with the boots and she's he's like, "Hey, boots, like, is that your dad's boots or whatever?" Like, it's quite obvious that this little girl's brain was so messed up from what she watched happen with her sister. And her father, mm-hmm. that the first man to come in, because this goes into the complications of like psychology, is like mm-hmm. for her that was like her savior. So that's why she behaved yeah. the way she did. Like her chemist, her brain chemistry didn't function or get to the the proper development that a regular person would. So she was connected yeah. to this guy in a sick way where she didn't understand that like the bad things he was pushing on her were bad things because she was like, yeah, but he saved me, so it's like this is good. Like she was ultimately like the most unknown character. Like. She she didn't know what she was really doing. Like she kind of just got there because that's yeah. how she was nurtured yeah. to be, right? You're absolutely like, right. And, and like yeah. both mm-hmm. both of us, both me and Raza, I think I believe we both called her fucking crazy, right? Yeah. We, we get that great shot of when she's like playing around with the fire that's in the motel, and it cuts from there to that rich family that was murdered, and she's holding the knife. With like yes. just the legs popping out, and it's like a quick little flash, yeah. and and like there's conversation going on, and then it happens again with a close up, and yeah. it's like okay, so be, this cult has literally turned her into like a psychopath, assassin, right. an assassin, exactly. yeah, like she was their little assassin, like that's what he was building her up to be, which is what Manson did essentially. He right. had the women yeah. do the things he didn't want to do. But also, not, not just uh, the women, but I love how Chris Hemsworth's first introduction in this in it is just him taking his clothes off. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember the that. first is the the at the beach, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Just right. the shadow. Yeah, he starts to taking mm-hmm. his. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you get yeah, that is, with me? Uh, no. It's creepy as fuck. <laughs> it is creepy as shit. Yeah, I think that's how it's set up. Like, okay, here you go. You gotta hate this guy right away. It's right. a bit creepy. And you're right, it is a manipulative tactic. It's well, like it just shows you how that little girl was... Because when you take something like that from a little girl, right? That's how she got attached to him, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's fucked it, up. It's sort but... of off, like um, reinforced it to the audience during that Bond fire fight scene. Yeah, who wants to come home? So, who wants to come to oh, the so, house. Yeah, yeah, so Which also, in, in, see, like, see, now as you're talking about it, there's little things I'm remembering. That was the thing with Manson. There was a big, like, main farmhouse and then the little farmhouse prop pieces on that big property with the trailers or whatever. So that was a common thing. Like, whoever was popular was spending the night with him. Creepy. Yeah. I'm glad we don't live in the 70s anymore. Creepy. I know, right? <laughs> Creepy as shit. And he was he operated yeah, in the desert too, ideas. and isn't Nevada in the desert? Desert. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, yeah. Have you ever heard of uh, what is it? Nexium. That's what I think of. These what do you think still of cults? Oh, the yeah. the yeah. SEX cult. Yeah, the like business SEX cult. Hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. I think it's um. You know, from start to fin- finish, it like it keeps on going. It's a fucking roller co- coaster. Of of a mo- of a movie, um, it 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 like, it it, it's, it's like it's intricate, but it's also not that hard to mm-hmm. follow. Right, and it it, d- it doesn't feel like it drags anywhere. I feel no. like no. arguably the end, which you know, wine mom, no, we I know how the pacing of, of the end was. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. It's a happy ending, right? For at yeah. least two characters. And... Yeah, I'm just glad Je- 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 Jeffy Boo li- uh, Boy live, uh, uh, lived. Yeah, he was my I, favorite. In the I was movie. really yeah. hoping they show Jeffy Boy, and then he's just like forgotten who he was or something. Is what I wanted. I, that's what Can I was I just, hoping for. That scene, that scene. I just want to say one thing. That scene where. Chris Hemsworth is saying, "What's your name?" And then he's just like, "You're like, oh, I he has, he has a like, he has a dim, uh, dementia." And then he look, he looks all over at, at Darlene. They're like, "Did I tell you my my name?" I was like, "This is why yeah. you're one of the best actors in 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 Hall in Hollywood." It was, was a really like, good cry. moment. Don't cry, Riza. 
Harrison Ford wishes he 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 was you. You you oh, brought up shit. a great point about how he doesn't like overshadow anyone because you yeah. have you have this classic actor. And then yeah. all these young people, even like John Hamm compared to him, you can consider younger, right? Yeah. 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 But um, Jeff Bridges, I feel like this movie really is the stake of showing that he's gone from a great leading man to someone who can still be in a movie and not overshadow yeah. the other actors yeah. and kind of help yeah. bring them to light, right? Like Brian... Cranston, I I look at him in, in in those roles too. I feel like he's Most still kind of had. like if, I don't like, know anymore. I don't know he, anymore. He doesn't like, have the lead. Really, what you think he didn't after. kill it as Zordon? Is Zordon of the Power Rangers, bro? You don't think he did that? Oh like, shit! So I forgot crazy. about that. Shit, there, no. Good but, point. Man. Good um, point. <laughs> That's on that note, though, is like that's why I think I had a point about that, too, is Jeff Bridgie here is what I've noticed from Hateful Eight and all the other films he's done as an old man, Tron, even. I think part of it is he embraces the he plays an old man character. He's taking roles to fit his current state rather than trying to age down or make the Irishman. Yeah. Rather than try to force him. It, it's very natural for him to be old man. Yeah. Bridger now, you know what I mean? I he, forgot how good of an actor he was when he first interacted with Darlene. I was like, I was like, I got the fresh get a oh my gosh. Bailey, <laughs> I got Bailey a I'm going to spank you. Okay, give me one. Uh, give me a dirty one. Jeff, Br- Jeff Bridges is not in the Hateful Eight. He's not in the Hateful Eight. I just, he's yeah, not? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no he's not. There's he's a, not. There's a few old people. Are you thinking of Kurt Russell? Because he's Kurt another. Russell, 100% thinking of Kurt I just Russell. thought, yeah. I didn't correct him because I didn't want to sound dumb. directly mixed him up. <laughs> Shit. Okay. I'm okay. glad I'm glad he brought it up again because he, he mentioned it at the beginning and I was like That's, I yeah. swear. I swear they're the same. Makes sense though. Makes sense. So though. everything Billy has said up to better. up to this point is invalid. Redacted. <laughs> Redacted. <No>. <laughs> Your whole opinion is now trash. Watch this. It's based on it hinges on the fact that Jeff Bridges wasn't the hate, hate, hateful eight. Yeah. <laughs> the whole podcast yeah. is just gonna be twenty minutes. Daily's just cut out. I fucked up, guys. <laughs> so, like, what would you guys... I have a direct question, then. Is this a subgenre? Obviously, as, like, a genre, it's, like, a thriller, horror. But is it, like... Is this, like, a whodunit horror. movie? What type of, like... Is this a mystery puzzle? Like, what is this? Crime thriller, thriller, I think. Crime, crime thriller. thriller. Yeah, crime, crime thriller. Yeah. We're getting the horror from. Because you you don't know what's going on, it's creepy. I guess you're right, not horror, but yeah, it's supposed to be you're creeped out. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's thriller, as I'm saying it. So I like totally the right. scene, as I mentioned earlier, where John Hamm gets killed, and then it you hear whimpering in the background, and then you're like, who who's that? Who's that? And then it shows how good this movie is. <laughs> At the, after that point, the stakes are set. Even even the detail of like. It's not specifically one window of that back hallway, which yeah. te- technically makes this motel a hotel, by the way. Someone pointed that out in the trivia is because there's yeah. a hallway with two entrances, technically. Anyways, oh, um, but yeah. one of the windows where the camera is not, you can see the marks in the ground where the tripod was like oh, that. Mm-hmm. That is the yeah. attention to detail in this film. And, it, you know. I'm glad you. I was thinking about this movie all day today. I was like, I, I really enjoyed it, and I think I'm gonna get unripped apart. And I'm glad Panda <laughs> said he, 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 he liked it because it's not like I. It, it doesn't seem like a movie for everybody. That's that's the thing. It, 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 you have to be in a certain like mindset. I I believe to because it's a very right. honed in, intimate movie. One lo- location. There's not much outside of character development that's going on is just a t- it's it's art uh, how do you feel vine mom <laughs> tell us about it <laughs> what a mute <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hmm. now, do you have any I, thoughts i mean i'm not the i'm not the end all be all of movie critique but but get like, in we're all praising no it, so. like you i had a good time with some headaches i just feel like i respect that raza loves the movie I don't feel that great about it. 
That's what I'm saying. Like, I, it, mm-hmm. it, like the movie was good for what it was. Maybe I need to like rewatch it or something. Like, I just feel like for me, it didn't capture my attention. Right. So maybe that's like why I'm like, mm, it's okay. It was a movie. I that- think it missed Ethan Hawke. If Ethan Hawke was in it, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that shit. we all know that that <laughs> would kidding, definitely kidding, kidding. help. I would Jack Nicholson. He would have been the cop. Yeah, he would. Have, he would have died like, like John Hamm did. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I still would have been happy to see him. But again, like I really liked Dakota Johnson, and that wasn't the mm-hmm. changing factor for me for the movie. I wasn't like, oh, she's in it now. I, I love the movie. Arm is just coming out of the screen. Oh, so- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. No. So I just was like, yeah. So yeah. what I noticed uh, is by us putting together this movie club. I've kind of been treating it like a book club, right? Which is, Mm -hmm. I really like movies where I feel like they can be not, not adaptations, but as if it seems like they were from a novel. And this really feels like that, like a whodunit thriller. A Hemingway, Mm -hmm. a Hemingway novel, I, I, I think, yeah. Right, but like not like, in the seventies, but like the same sort of like. Right. I mean, it definitely did have like Absolutely. a book vibe, if that's what you're saying. Yeah. And and yeah, exactly, and and that's why like, I don't know, like I I've I know I've chosen two crime films at this point, but um. I I had that realization, and this legit seems like one of those movies. I it would probably be a messy fucking book to follow, because of. You know, Are jumping you right around. Down? No, <laughs> but I know you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I wanted to say is personally, um, uh, again, I'm bad at reading movies from one to ten, but this mm-hmm. movie is like near perfect for me. So maybe it's not a complete ten, but it's a nine at least for me. And fair, fair. Like. I just love everything about this. Like, mm-hmm. I, even while I was watching, I was like, are there going to be any loose ends that I'm not going to like? But they took care of the car mm-hmm. situation, right? And then I'm like, okay, the, the one minor thing that I maybe would have liked to have seen is Chris Hemsworth men grabbing the priest and the singer. Because, yeah. you know... As soon as he shows up, it's just like, okay, they all get dragged in. Given yeah. we don't really need that, but it would have been nice to find, you know, Jeff Bridges like half in the ground, pulling out the money, and then these guys bust into their room. And yeah. Then, yeah. That's maybe my one, my one negative. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even a negative. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm on board with, with, with Panda here. It, it's a, to me, it's a smart, very smart move. Movie, movie everything is there for a reason she's there singing for that scene where he's tapping on on the on the floor to open it up because dakota johnson is, look, is looking in because he she uh he told her there's a hallway back there right. that's like a reason and shit everything is there because of a context and stuff and that makes the movie go like smooth smoothly along and makes the story even twists more like understanding, like, like you're able to, again, as I said, like 20 times easy to follow if you're just paying enough attention. I I know Bailey's got something to say, but my mom, did you follow this movie? Was there not enough uh, searching for water in this for you? What are you talking about? Why do you always make such bad jokes? (laughs) Yeah, that was a good callback. No, I did not get that at all. Searching for water? What are you talking about? Anyways, anyways, Bailey. You're talking about Zeke dying in the in the tunnel. Before I give my That makes no sense. I don't get that joke. Before I give my sass, (laughs) right? What I'm trying to check in here then is like, yeah, do you feel it was an easier to follow plot line than the move film last week though? I mean, the movie, the plot was lined out for you from, like, the, basically the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Like, within, I don't know, 25 minutes, you knew That's... where the plot line was going. So, yeah, obviously it would be easier. So it's a stark contrast to last week's film, right? 
I I guess. I mean, I know I said I, I struggled to follow the plot line in the last one, but I didn't. It's not that I didn't struggle. To, it's, okay. No, but so I'm just <laughs> curious. I'm I'm curious. I followed why. this movie easier, correct? Because it was basically was it was a who done it. So it, it basically was like once you knew what the character's background was, like you already knew where the movie was gonna go. Okay. But the last one, I was upset because they there made no sense for him to be in the tunnel, and they killed him off, and that was different. I was mad about that. Oh. Okay, and it ruined the plot <laughs> of the movie for me. Some specific part. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I'm well, because Cody brought it up because he's bullying me. I'm, I was just making a joke. Yeah, good not job, a good joke. Uh-huh. Good job, Cody. No. I really hope Bailey didn't lose his train of thought because he was yeah. holding no. something in. That's because that was my only like, and it's not worth it. What it could have should have, but I felt like. In that same area where they were like taking the the money and the the singer back to the main hotel, and I understand why they want to keep the set a little bit insular, but I felt that some tension could have been built around Chris Hemsworth having to go to the the cabin room that's got that film material, or like they never took advantage of all this building up of all oh I gotta take it to Unit Four and then ship it off to Virginia. They just got the tape, came back. I felt like that they could have at least like used this build up yeah. that they were painting the larger motel and then we just stayed in the certain rooms. Which again, I agree with you guys, it was a technically great movie, so I wouldn't say it's like needed to be there, but it was like I that was the only thing I left feeling like I kinda would have liked to see all this weird shit that he had. Right. Or he was a weird guy. Yeah. <laughs> or even like or even like a like an after credits or something where whoever who the management is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. I see that. Yeah. But I did know to me that part I liked how it left it up to us. Yeah. It is your like it's it it's one of these movies where like it can get away with be like let the audience sort of like draw their own um, 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 imagination because we're already giving them a very good template. Oh, just fair. build all off of that, you lazy bumps. Right. That mm-hmm. But I, I ultimately agree with Bailey that there are some scenes that would that you know don't really I did I didn't need to be there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. Cool. But yeah, overall, yeah, good film. I'm not I'm not going to argue that with you guys. I'm definitely not going to say it's bad or trash you for putting it at the top of the list. I mean, I wouldn't say that it was near perfect, but. We get you, wine mom. We fucking heard you loud and clear. You know what I'm <laughs> no, I'm not. I, listen, I'm not trying to be a hater because, like I said, they did. Like, there's aspects of movies that are very important to me, and they did those things well. I'm not gonna say that they didn't, but I just don't think it was a near perfect movie, and that's not in a mean way. I, mm. Cody, you, you're wanting to say something so desperately, but go ahead. Yeah, but no, because it's a positive thing. Um, because I had a bad experience with this actress, Dakota Johnson, because I was forced to go see the first two Fifty Shades of Grey movies in theaters. And I did not. Her her performance wasn't good. Those movies aren't good. The writing isn't good. And this was the first thing I had seen with her where I was like, oh, so she is a good actress. Yeah. And I like like to see that she's choosing smaller budget films again everyone took a pay cut like bailey said the director the writers the actors right and to get this movie made it was a passion project right okay that's why it's so good holy fuck yeah right (laughs) so this movie made me respect dakota johnson and you're always talking about her and that's one of the reasons why i suggested it since no, I'm not. I'm not. Do- I'm not dogging. I agree. Like, <clears throat> I get what I get. What you're saying. I'm just saying. Like, there's just so many other movies in the world that I just can't. Like, if I'm looking at this movie, maybe in its own genre, maybe very separate from everything else, I can. I can agree that it's a pretty good movie. But Fair. for me, it just feels like it was. It was a movie that I don't hate that I watched. You know what I mean? And you probably you enjoyed it. your your yourself sure more than pitch black i'm sorry i just really hated the singing and i i feel like like i'm trying not to talk about it because i don't want to can you can you not i can't read that because my mom gave me a headache 
complaining about the singing. <laughs> oh, you yeah, sure wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. I'm sorry. Like, it just wasn't good. Because here's the thing. The singing aspect is not the problem. It was just not good singing. It, to me, it was ear piercing. It was annoying. It wasn't it like, like really a good song. No, but it's just like... <sighs> Why didn't they, like, I don't know if it was actually her singing or not, because I know sometimes so. they'll get actors. Yeah, bad choice. Somebody else should have sang it and she should have lip sang it. And then I would have been, like, better with it. I'm sorry. Like, I'm, try I'm trying not to be rude about it, but the actual singing itself was just not good singing. I ain't a big and singing expert, so I can't get all I'm not a singing expert either, one. but it's like, it was just not good singing, especially the type of music that she was singing. Like, she is a good singer. Let me just say that. She is a good singer. But for the character that she was supposed to be playing, like, they could have outsourced the vocals to make her an even better singer, which would have made that music more powerful because then you could see, oh, she truly is an underdog because she's so good at singing, but she's not getting her moment. But for me, I felt like she wasn't that great of a singer, so she was kind of in her moment, like, by doing those cheaper roles and, like, not as being as successful. I was like, I didn't feel like, oh, she's so magnificent. She should be in a better position. I was like, oh, okay, well, it makes sense because she's not the best singer in the world. But she didn't fully win at the e end either. She did. Yet. She had her own show. But still in Reno, and that's what the dude was making fun of her. For. But still, that's was that... like, oh, yeah, you're just going to be a fucking closing act in Reno. Yeah, but still, that's, that's still a big was. deal for her exactly. in comparison to what right. she was doing. Yeah, I agree. But I'm just saying, She's like, happy in the end. She's but... a friend now, too. Anyway. Yeah, until he wanders off and he can't remember <laughs> where he's going. Yeah. <laughs> Grandpa, get out of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind because I felt like the mainly the music was like, they used it like the title cards. I felt the music was almost hitting on each chapter of like, oh, it's like the crescendo of the storyline. It kind of felt like each time. Uh, so speaking of that panda, I want to ask right quick, because you usually see that shit. Is how, many, how many title cards did we have? Was it six or five? So there's four lead characters, um, plus the cult, which I forget what they call, plus the bellboy, and then Reno. I'm pretty sure there's okay. seven. So six for the story, seven for the end, which is cool. All right, cool. All right. I was just very curious. And again, I those know. came off as chapters, right? Yeah. Going back to the book thing and leaving things open to your imagination. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with the book, I, I'm fascinated by this. Like um, whenever I find a movie and it's like, this is a brand new story that was written in 2020 or 2018. 17, I think. Uh -huh. 17 or 18? Something like 2018. that. 2018. Mm -hmm. Like um. it's, it, it's amazing. And like to me, and it's a tribute to that era. And that's why the music, I love it. Yeah. yeah, both, both the soundtrack really. and her singing. And again, yeah. she's practicing. You got to remember for most of the movie, we do get a little bit of her in the studio and at the end. But so I'll take your complaints. I'm just going to say, like, like the she's, acapella she's, singing is very cringy for me. It was just to me, it just felt very cringy. I'm sorry. So you'd rather full musical you want? Jeff if she's going to be singing like I would have just if it was going to be acapella, <laughs> yeah, it could have been better. Really. And because they're. Anyway, let's move on. No, I was following. <laughs> no. I respect your no. opinion. Like, uh, it's okay. Because uh, you guys are going to keep saying how good it was, and it wasn't guy. good. So like, what? what you guys, the singing was not good. Like, you guys can like it, that's fine, but it was not good. So I don't know shit about singing. Is it out of pitch? Was it out of pitch? It just felt very, like, like amateur. It just felt super amateur. Which, I guess that's the point. Like, she was supposed to be an amateur singer. But it's just, like, for me, I was like, one, I have to actually watch this movie. And the singing is amateur and horrible. It's like, if that's what you were trying to portray, like, you're just making a part of the movie that's like, ugh, I can't even, like, I had to mute it every time she was singing. I guess. I'm having imposter syndrome about whether well, or not she, I she know she's a professional singer. She's a what? Okay. She's a professional singer. Well, that's very sad. Okay, I have a question. Because <laughs> they did her okay, dirty so then. They did her dirty then. Because whoever edited her vocals or whatever did her dirty. So. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, okay. Let's say this hotel, uh, motel, whatever, um, motel, did not have the creepy back rooms 
would you stay here at this motel? And is there anything that you'd like to experience that you saw in the movie? Like, let's say you are in the 60s and you're accepted, Raza. Yeah. Let's first cross that, that, that was, yeah, right. that was. But, but, but let's say, you know, legally you can gamble in Nevada and can't drink, but then you yeah. can drink in California and not gamble. You have yeah. the option to stay at this hotel. Is there anything specific that you'd want to try out or enjoy? You know, you got the the honeymoon suite jacuzzi. You got uh, the the jukebox. You got the choosing of foods and trying not mm-hmm. to, you know, grab some tuna. It might be bad or something. Right, right. Um, I just you know get toasty with the uh, the the bellhop. It's the seventies. I'm brown. I'm coming from Pakistan. I'm all alone in this new, in this new land. So the first thing I'm gonna do is chase that dragon, right, guys? And, you have and an English that. accent in this scenario. <laughs> all right. Wow. I'm a well-educated cliche, Pakistani cliche. man. I go yeah. to the hotel. I, I meet up with this bellhop. I say, "Yo, bro. I mean, hey, hey, Mister." Is that how they talk to them? And I don't know how they fucking. Hey, oh, hey, geez. holy, something white is happening. No, I'm kidding. Uh, hey there, fella. Hey, yeah. Hey uh, there, hey, big hey, fella. Hey, you want to go to the ballpark? Hey, and uh, hey, <laughs> you got to do the quick and fast. Somebody and, help me. And in the Please. back, and do some smack. <laughs> That's what I would say. Listen here, dolls. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Listen here, here crispy thing. <laughs> Listen here. Here, 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 here. Oh my god. Dude. I've had enough. You want free whiskey and bowler hats? Okay. Come at the dawn of the sunrise. Here, 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 here. Oh boy. Movie what madness. Cody is oh, laughing god. way too much. <laughs> no. I don't know. What's Cody, you're not ready. Thing? You're not ready. You're yeah. not ready. <laughs> Try take another round. I You're not remember. ready. It's, it's, it, I think it's time. We're gonna go to the ads. We're going to ads. We're going to ads. That was a good bit. We're going to yeah, ads. Yeah. This episode is released in a whole bunch of different formats. Not only do we have our edited version here on YouTube, we also have an audio version one on Spotify and all the podcast platforms near you. If you happen to be one of those people listening to the audio only version, don't forget that you can tune in live as we record these things. A little bit more personable when you can interact with us and then you can always come back at the end of the week when we drop the edited version and contrast how it came out either way we know we got a decent live crew starting we got our uh, our community going and bruh we on the ups we on the ups and thank you for the, for you for you to you to the people to the internets to the, the the webcam that i'm talking to wouldn't be here without you thank you guys we back. We're what back does to one it. Bring? Everybody. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. The whole show. That's what my. That's what wine mom brings. He positives for us, and then. Just yeah, because you. you guys need it the most. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> sorry to tell you. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, All right. Really. Now that my wow, confidence okay. has been undermined. I would like to, uh, I'll, I'll go out with mine most blatantly then, because I come out first. We do buy it, rent it, or skip it. If you're listening to the audio version of this, this is what we do every week for the film to decide what we think you should do, and I will put rent it as my answer. I'd say, I'll probably forget about this movie, honestly. Like, I understand that it's very crisp and well-rounded and should be shown in movie classes. It's just, it didn't stick in my mind. It felt like a twist fest. So I would say rent it and definitely worth the watch, but it's not in my, like, add to the library personally. Cringe. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my god. Uh, Buy it. Buy it. Uh, it, It's one of those type of movies you you can go, you watch it once and then wait a couple months or a year or whatever and go back into it. You'll get something new every time because it feels like a fresh type of movie even though you you know the ending it just it feels like a proper movie every time you watch it because it, it it's it's the delivery i agree and the smaller details uh, are like what you forget about like you may know the outcome of this movie but if you wait a few months or a year or two years 
you go in kind of fresh. Even if you know where it's going to end up, you don't know how it's going to unfold. Exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's something new every time. That's... Right. Hmm. Wine mom? Hmm. Um, I'll say buy it, too. I don't want to say skip it because it's not a skip, but I also don't want to say rent it because it's not rentable. I would say, it, like, well, it's on Disney+. Plus. If it's I free. could... That's what I was going to say. If I could, I would say, like, Netflix and chill it, because you're not really going to pay that much attention when you're doing that, so. That's, Wait, that's my opinion. Did you pay attention during this No, I paid, I paid attention. Okay. <laughs> okay. I keep dropping this fucking ball. No, I paid attention. I'm just saying, like, it's a good Netflix and chill. Cody, your bits are so bad today. I don't know what's wrong with you. You told me yourself that you were on TikTok. Yeah, I was like, on TikTok. Movie, well, so. not the entire movie, but periodically. Hey, okay. give it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and listen, from my point of view, see it if you have the opportunity or if you're going out of your way to see it. Um, buy it if you enjoy it because we support physical media in this house. Yes, yeah. And become a hoarder like me and yeah. have movies all over your house and you can't sleep anywhere because movies. That's where you gotta stream them. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, so with that guys, we've got our important weekly question that we have to let the audience oh. know about, right? Wine mom, wine mom, I've got this important question that I need to throw at Raza. Was Bo Burnham in this movie? I, you saw him in the reflection as a ghost in one of the like the two way mirrors. The first time you see him is in the corner when John Hamm is looking at Darlene singing. Presses his honestly, and you see, about... see a little a little pale white boy come out of the, the <laughs> corner. Anyway, and if ever there was a very, bit that should be killed, he's just kind of cringe stuff. But then he he leaves, and then that's the last you you you, you hear of it. Plot yeah. twist: Bo Burnham played the daughter of John Hamm on the phone. On the phone. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. My, my goofy Tom one Cruise was, was at the cult meeting. Tom Cruise was the one on the tape, bro. That's the the story. No, he was the one. I'm gonna throw this makeup, ball at you. Fighting boots in the bond fire scene. Any sways. Let's get the freak out of that. All right, that's okay. So we'll wrap it up for this episode. If you are listening to the audio version of this show, what we do is we record it live. So if you want, you can hang out with us after and give your opinions live, and we'll interact with you. Otherwise, tune into this weekly. It drops every two weeks. We've got our podcast on the same feed, which would have dropped today as well. On top of that, me and Raza are here on this channel for all of March. Making content almost every day, unless, you know, life gets in the way. Look at that rhyme. Now, Raza, I, I gave most of them, but where the, can they find us on social media? Uh, they can find us on Spotify, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, which is apparently not having a good time in America um, um, right, uh, uh, right now. And on, uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. So look out for uh, us there. Dropping content every single day this month, and it's not exhausting uh, at all. No, no, not at all. So, Panda, Panda, we also know you're getting into creative projects. Is there anything you would like to shout out as we're headed out? Um, I'm going to try and stream soon, so you can look up my Twitch handle, which is Love Fail Panda, and in my description, I have my link tree. You can find me everywhere else through that and yeah hopefully i'll be live soon doing some artsy things opening pokemon cards and such fuck yeah i'm with it i'm with it like let's get those loot boxes those open them rare packs get them good pulls as they say all right wine mom do you have anything to promote other than your new virtual like do you have new nfts you may have created i heard you've got a crypto wallet today is there anything is there new, new about your digital that's, existence that's dropping actually well, mom coin what I was going to say is yeah, everyone but... should watch the episode that's dropping. Like the last episode we yeah. did live that when... What do you mean? 
the last episode that we just oh, the did. Last movie the club. last no, not the last movie club. The last traditional episode oh, the normal, we did. Oh, the same ish different. Yeah, day, our like podcast, last yes. week's podcast was really good, and people should watch it. We talked about some pretty good stuff in there, and I think like what did we if talk you about want again? to, I forgot. We talked about a lot of different stuff, life life stuff. Yeah, and how to oh, stay okay. motivated and blah, blah, I'm blah. just saying, it was a really, really good episode, and it was my first, like, actual episode back that was not, like, a movie club thing. It was my first time actually back, and it was a really Yo. good episode. So. You finally if got you, one if, if, back. Well, because what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, if you're new, and this is the first time you are seeing me, because I haven't been here in, I don't even know how long, then if you want to get an idea of what I'm like on the show, it's a better idea than this. Yes. I'm just saying. Yes. Because here I'm being mean. There I'm less mean. And then hopefully <laughs> in all all instances, <laughs> in all instances, you now get to live in the virtual reality with her. Yeah. Also, this yeah. thing now apparently. And she, she secretly cares. likes it. The thing is, she secretly likes it. I, I see her listen, giggling when she looks at it. I'm looking at it because it's something to to look at. But I just like that that like because Cody pointed out does the Kubrick stare, which is like how baller is that.